welcome everybody my name is Andrea Gumal from Creative Creations welcome to my channel everybody today we're going to create this cute little autumn watercolor uh, abstract autumn watercolor uh, card together just having a little bit of fun or actually lots of fun I had lots of fun <laughs> with this cute little autumn tree forest scene here super easy super quick um, and yeah everybody can do it because it is like a little bit on the abstract side so you actually can't go wrong with this um, yeah so um, I think that's all I have to say I'm working with the Prima watercolor confections here um, also popped in the red from my Schminke Hardram watercolors and other than that working on a heavyweight watercolor paper here for the watercolor part and uh, for the background just use some black and uh, pearlescent copper cardstock to lay this on top use the autumn wind stems here from the um, Creative Creations um, changing leaf stem set and some teeny tiny Nouveau drops just to add a little bit of additional texture here. I'm not even sure if the camera catches this. I bet not. But it is there. <laughs> so yeah, let's jump right in. Let's get started. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And other than that, enjoy the video. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna tape my paper here just to have a nice frame for my actual actual work in the end. Okay, so like this, just to have um, like a nice white border in the end. So this is the area that I'm gonna work in here. Uh, and the first thing is uh, gonna get it nice and wet. Well, actually the very first thing is I'm gonna pick my color palette. <laughs> totally makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, so gonna get this wet. Just for a tiny bit of a background color. So you want it nice and wet, but not like puddles of water on here. You just kind of want the colors to nicely blend. And then I'm just going to go with a little bit of a sky color here. A little bit of a darker autumn sky. A little bit of blue. And a tiny bit of this yellow brown here so it doesn't need a lot just gonna dab a little bit of this into the wet surface here I'm just gonna spread it out and kind of let it do the its own thing a little Just really want the, the base color here, very, very light, just a, like a hint of color. And remember, watercolor always dries a little lighter, so. Make sure to keep that in mind as you go. Just about like that. I'm gonna lift out like a little here just like that just letting it blend a little totally fine don't need that like perfect shape just like the slightest hint of the sun here in the sky Just about like that. 
Maybe a tad bit more brown here to the ground. Just about like that. I'm going to let this dry and we come back with our little autumn trees. Okay, so then I basically just map out the, just a very basic shape of my tree, just with a very, very light orange, green, just like one first base color here. Just like the, the crown of the tree, just kind of mapping in, deciding where I want it to go. And this is like nothing to do with the final color that I'm going with. For me it's just like a first first base color so that I have a little bit of an idea of where I'm going with um, just with the branches and the foliage, the leaves of the tree or the trees here. Just want to make sure that that first color is like very very light. Because again with watercolor you want to work light to dark. So you want to start like very very light. As you can see I'm just like dabbing my brush. Just about like that. Looks good to me. Maybe a little up here, just about like that. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, so in the next round, I'm just mixing like a little bit of a light browny orange color. And again, if you're looking like at autumn trees, that kind of all the colors <laughs> between like red, orange, brown, green. So you can really go to town with this, uh, with autumn trees and have lots of fun with the colors, mixing a little bit of a red here. Just start with this like yellow orangey color here. Again, kind of wanting to build it up from light to dark. So, just seeing where I did like put my, my first foliage here, my leaves, the crowns of my trees. And I'm just going in with my orange, yellow this time. Again, just like dabbing my filbert brush here. Kind of really just want a little bit of this texture. But again, you can't like draw each and every leaf. Of course you could. Depends on the size you're working on, but <laughs> in this case, I just want this like the loose impression of trees here. Okay, so also dabbing in a little more solid in some areas. Just 
just about like that. And I can already grab a little bit of a darker red orange here. Maybe I actually want a little bit of a juicy, vibrant orangey red. I think I'll just go with this one from the Schmincke watercolors. A little bit of this vibrant yellow. and wet this time just kind of letting the colors blend and bleed a little letting them like have some fun <laughs> on the paper just about like that so dipping in a little bit more of the yellow in some areas. And then I'm just letting this dry again before I go darker. Okay, so next I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a brownish color. Just mixing some dark brown with a little bit of this yellow and red. Again, like not overthinking it. And now I will start to give this a little more shape, kind of slightly deciding where the individual trees would be. Okay. And usually at the top they would catch a little more light and like in between the branches and at the bottom there would be a little more darkness, right? Again, still just dabbing. The brush, this time just using Slightly smaller tip, a round tip one. And if you imagine looking at like an autumn forest or some a combination, a grouping of autumn trees right in front of you, you would hardly see like where one tree ends and where another tree starts. It's all like kind of melting into each other. It's just like a symphony a cluster of autumn colors and that's actually what I love and that's actually what I wanted to like um, mimic here. So just grabbing a tiny bit of green just in some areas I kind of want a little bit of green still visible. bit more here in the sky just a little bit like a cloud shape just using like a grayish blue
just about like that. Try a little more texture up there. So I'm gonna let this down there dry again. And then the next thing is I would pop in a little bit of some branches. You could do this with like an angled brush with a very fine side of it or I really love to use my branch and detail brush for this because it holds like a lot of color, a lot of pigment yet it kind of goes up to this like super super pointy tip here which I love so I'm gonna grab a little bit of a darkish brown here and then I will just go in just giving the like the slightest impl impression <laughs> of like some uh, like little like branches here also peeking through in the center be a little bolder down there at the bottom Just about like that, just to kind of give it a little bit of texture in between them, in between, yeah, I kind of can't talk today, <laughs> in between those different combinations of greenery of leaves here. Just about like that and then I will just go in and Dab a little more brown just into some areas to create a little more depth and shape here, like between the different trees, just to kind of separate the different layers a little, right? Just about like that, and again for like an abstract autumn scene that's detailed enough. Actually, don't want to go more into detail here because again, I kind of just want to capture that feel and like all those fun colors. I just pop in a tiny bit of some super bright color here. And then I would probably add a little bit of splattering. Actually, it's, I think it just needs a tiny bit more like darkness down here. Again, this is just like process as I go, just look and then kind of decide 
what I want to do and what it needs where. If it needs a little more, a little less. Just about like that. Alrighty, so just a couple of splatters and then calling done. So I'll just load my brush with a little bit of a orange for example and just add some teeny tiny splatters here just to kind of add to that autumn effect maybe a little bit of red and like those splatters are like super small so I guess you can barely see them on camera but they are there So next I just want to pop a little bit of white in here, just some teeny tiny light reflections in between the branches, just here and there, teeny tiny dots, nothing super super uh, big. <laughs> Could of course do this with um, with a with a little like marker, but again with this brush, it works pretty good. Maybe one up here, just about like that to balance it off a little. So gonna get rid of the masking tape. I'm gonna cut it off, trim it to size for my little autumn card. Like this, okay? And then I will just take a look and see what type of paper I can want to use to layer this. Okay, so I grabbed some black cardstock uh, to kind of layer this and then some of this beautiful like iridescent autumn <laughs> color cardstock and I'll just go ahead and trim this and layer this. I'm gonna stick this onto this. This layering kind of really adds to this teeny tiny watercolor piece here because it just gives it a nice frame and uh, the black kind of um, yeah makes the other colors pop a little and this very like calm background um, it also kind of calms the whole thing down a little because this like watercolor part is like super busy and initially I kind of planned to layer it on a paper like that but then I decided it would be like way too busy because like the foreground is super busy already and if you imagine the background to be um, like busy as well that would be like too much busy right <laughs> so uh, last thing I want to do I want to add a tiny sentiment here and then yeah just calling this cute little autumn watercolor card uh, done and I think I will just go with the changing leaves here let's see if that fits uh, or maybe autumn winds that fits better I guess um, uh, but, but, yeah I think I will just go with the autumn winds Autumn 
penguins and to be honest that was a little scary <laughs> because of course I could have stamped it earlier before like assembling the card <laughs> because if I would have messed up with this stamp then um, yeah that would have been less than perfect and I would have to kind of make it work just add a tiny flower or tag or something <laughs> If you mess up, just add a flower, right? Um, yeah, and then... I thought to finish it off some Nouveau Drops maybe. Uh, just some teeny tiny ones. Really teeny tiny. Nothing big. Kind of want to like overpower the watercolor here. Just for a little bit of additional texture in the end. And of course, like this will not do a lot on camera right now, but in real life, they kind of leave you with a really pretty enamel dot effect. Which just kind of adds a little bit more depth and dimension and texture especially if you're like holding the card in your hands I kind of like it to have just a teeny tiny bit of texture going on somewhere this kind of makes it a little extra special and now we have some fireworks going on outside I don't know why I love it, really cute and as you can see this was like super super quick and actually super easy just have some fun with it I hope it inspired you, I hope you like it um, if you create something inspired by this feel free to tag me on social media feel free to share with me because I always love to take a look at your work inspired by my videos and other than that uh, yeah, wishing you a wonderful end of September guys and talk to you all again soon, bye